Hello everyone, welcome to volume 13 and blah 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 friendship blah blah blah. <laughs> that's it, that's literally what's it. I'm glad I did it. Anyway, if you remember Boulder, um, he's the one character that we often encounter in the past quest. I was actually surprised to see him here. It kind of makes sense, I guess. We finally gonna understand with what contest uh, is these guys about. Uh, we saw him in our d dreams, so you know, it's kind of weird. I don't know. You just aren't feeling it today. You are getting more and more of these grey nights, recently nights where the call of the street that the infinite a rumble of companionship just sound exhausting and meaningless. As uh, rough. You had days like this back on Earth too, when getting out of a bed just didn't seem worth it. The sun is just beginning to sleep under the horizon, and usually this will be the sign to rise and shine, or rise and dark. But all you have managed to do so far this even is make yourself some coffee. I guess that is a victory I would like to call it. You resistantly mentioned to Tagore that you drink instant. Okay, never mind. You are... <laughs> you are disgusting. <laughs> uh, no, I'm joking. Um, instant coffee is weird. Like, I had some, but uh, if I have to choose, I probably prefer not to have instant coffee. And uh, he was uh, so disgusted that he gave you a coffee machine. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Oh, okay. Tagora. <laughs> Tagora is me, basically. We're, sh we're sharing that. Um, he claimed maybe it was an old one he doesn't need it, doesn't use it anymore, but still had the pri ta a price tag on it. <laughs> cool. <Yeah. laughs> uh, on the table sits a palm house cornerly, i had taken off a dead kid specially for you, and cutting your hand in a mug. Uh, Skylar Sandy looks like she painted herself. There is a white blob on the side that you think is supposed to be lady. You are, you, you are even wearing the hoodie Mall gave you to cut uh, to even chill. So first thing first, guys, I am the the coffee. The Easter coffee is disgusting. Okay, I tried them. I tried several of them. Like I had like several big one. I street uh, like if I'm desperate, I'll get it. But let's be honest, it's fucking shit. <laughs> It's bad. <laughs> I had one that was like uh, the granul uh, granules it were like weird. It was like chocolate. I think it was so weird. I didn't... I'm not sure if it tastes like coffee. It tastes weird. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's move on. Here you are, wrapped up in the warm embrace of your friends. Goodwill, safe and sound, but deep inside you, you faster something. A yawning existential dissatisfaction, the classic angst. That philosopher wrote about your palm has chimes that you pick it up lazily. What another Randall trying to slime your DMs? Sorry, folks, you just don't have time for that anymore. You're a, you're a friend for connoisseur, a sommelier of the rarest of amicable vintage. If uh, our Elon Musk uh, Lord is gonna fix Twitter, maybe I'm gonna make it my my an account too. <laughs> you unlock the screen to find a message. Psst. I said that this line is secure. Okay. Actually, I'm positive that it isn't, but I'm risking contact because it is imperative that we speak. I'm sending your answer for coordinates. If you avoid a mic, can be any time, I have the sun has set. Uh, okay. <coughs> <coughs> so I realize that these are not the dogs, but please believe me when I tell you that this is not a trick or a trap. Okay, I have a report information regarding you, uh, your place on after. You attempt to reply to the message, but there is instant a curse of or anywhere to your text. In fact, there doesn't uh, even appear to be a message or app open on your phone, it's just a random text box floating the void. You barely have a chance to read it all the way through before it vanishes, and Gurgle Mouse opens up with another already program. It's close enough to walk to, which is great because using your stolen scuttle bucket, it makes you a little nervous. You swallow the rest of your coffee and grab your shoes. Oh, we are here. Your GPS leads you to the shop. You recognize it's the cafe from your weird sort of date with Linera. It's not too crowded at this time of the day. The usual studying crowd doesn't appear to be here, and a couple of tourists are sitting around sharing pots of tea. Hard data? What? Uh, okay. Words on? Fool! Fucking idiot! I explicitly stated I wanted an SM day club. 
Not whatever this garbage is. Oh, now you know this person. It really has been a minute, hasn't it? Uh, wow, well, yeah. <laughs> Out of the stands in front of the counter, shouting at the cash register. Whatever automated system runs, this shop has apparently gotten her order wrong. What are you looking at, huh? This is absolutely not of your... Oh, it's you. Uh, hi. Uh, Adata swiftly covered up her surprise, examining sharp, perfectly shaped nail. Uh, you look different. Better? Uh, Lex obviously. <laughs> Let's not exaggerate. I simply mean you look less like toxic waste, more like run of the grain grinder garbage. <laughs> oh, fantastic. <laughs> you tell Anna that it's good to see her too, but this really takes you back. You'd be so simple back then. You evolved! So, uh, no, sorry. <laughs> so, evolved, you were lesser focused on a single desired friendship. Now, while you still like friends, you really do, but you also have like a car! A sweatshirt with somebody sign of it, we move up in the world, and we still have our ribs, right? We still, uh, we, we, I guess we healed, somehow, maybe, perhaps, I'm not sure, so sure. Fascinating, isn't it? Uh, by the way, is, the, is she the one who summoned you here? Summoned you? You must be joking. I haven't spared a single solitary thought of you since you dragged your wretched carcass out of my hive. Absently, if we show how new the pockets of your hoodie, <laughs> something crinkles between your fingers. They pull out a folded piece of notebook paper, okay? This definitely had been there when you left your hive. You pass a couple of people in the street, but you definitely don't remember any of them getting close enough to slip something in your pocket. Huh. These all they say to words. Out back. Oh man, should you go? Go, 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 go! <laughs> back it up, as bad as basement, no way! <laughs> back! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's go, 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 go. Let's be real here. If you were ever going to refuse a suspicious invitation, you would have done it by now. <laughs> you have drawn the line at the meal of tea for murder church running. <laughs> you cannot resist a social game, which uh, your tragic flaw. <laughs> Poor us. No. No. Okay, I guess. Enjoy yourself. Goodbye, Agatha. <laughs> I feel like if we stay, she will kill us. I have some weird. Oh, we probably got less ribs. <laughs> you head back through the uh, beaded curtain and half, expecting an alarm to ring. How do you keep people from just robbing stores here? Are they like laser and shit? No, oh, nice, nice. Wow. <laughs> this backyard looks fancy. <laughs> We emerge to a tiny little back garden. Now, of the piece, uh, none of the plants are here, one you recognize from it. But it's still nice. You cross a bridge over the slow flowing stream and find yourself looking down a path that blooms into a tight, dizenly spiral. Maybe you're supposed to walk across in the palm that you place in the universe. Your contemplation will be inevitable cut off before you hit its climax. Because someone is sitting at the center of the spiral. She is small, comfortable shape, with her hair cut short and choppy around her chin, wearing a shapeless white dress, really more of a robe. Psst, I've been waiting for you. Okay. Thanks for coming. Okay. She's speaking at the stage of whisper, low and full of air, but still loud enough to hear across the path. The last time I saw you was like, um... Dreamlike? Do you get absorbed? I don't know. Uh, I'm so weird. You pick your way carefully across the spiral, making sure not to mess any of the up trading, only side lines. The girl gives you a small secret secret smile. My name is Bolvier. You ask her if this is the, her garden. Does she live here? It's nice, but it's not exactly up to the elements. Actually it looks like there is some storm clouds rolling in. They're probably going to get uh, to get rain soon. Oh yeah. My recuper raccoon is over there under the tree. She smiles again, you cannot tell if she's messing around, in fact, she's entirely readable. Like her face is totally reflective surface, and uh, all you are seeing is uh, the cloudy sky at the garden. You cannot tell how she feels uh, about you at all. Would like to sit down? Inside a circle? Or oh, she looks around like she's uh, only just realizing she's at the center of a complicated geometric battle. Uh, it doesn't matter. I only wanted to see if you will fall at the path or trample through it. But you did it. neither. You can forge your own way while taking care of to preserve that which has come before. You ask her what that means. Maybe nothing. I'm not so sure. The wind tosses her hair. She clouds chase each other across the sky. If the rain comes, it will come soon. 
Bold Eagle look at you as you shift awkwardly and shiver. Push your hands into the into your hoodie. <laughs> this is different than any other friend meetup you you've had. Even the others who purposefully sold you out. There's a serenity to both here, with all the rest luck. Or maybe there's just this zen as fuck God that gets into you. You try to remember what Boldy said to you in the message that she somehow managed to make appear on your phone. And then immediately self immolate that she has some information for you about your place on Alternia and some shit like that. Did I say that? I guess I did. Boldy, help me out! Jesus Christ! <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Um, okay, I just I'm suppose I want a chance to talk to you. Be before then. I was starting to feel a little mm, jealous, maybe. Then there's still like four uh, four volumes. Chill, Boldir. Chill. Right, you guess everybody has been going on about the funny dumb alien robot who's been prowling the countryside. No, that's not it. Though I'm sure you are very funny. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much, actually. <laughs> I just wanted to just talk to you. Someone who is so at the swell of fate and to swim whims of the paradox. Paradox! You great! <laughs> Oh my god, you don't know anything about paradoxes? Well, you know what they are, just don't see why they are relevant. They are paradoxes that are relevant by their very nature, besides of what nature that makes them so difficult to this story. You shake your head, you are not built for this cosmic stuff, you are just an orphan from Earth with quick fingers for spaceships and apparently vehicles. Uh, <laughs> if they have embedded an automated uh, driving uh, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> anyway, Baldi gives you another sly smile. Anyway, oh, we're often interesting. <laughs> uh, small information that we totally uh, left. Oh, quick fingers! Mm. <coughs> you blush, you hadn't meant that as a dirty joke or anything. Also, your fingers are nowhere near as quick as hers. She somehow got a piece of paper in your pocket while you were standing in a coffin. And she was back here. That was like reverse pickpocketing through astral projection. Okay, she 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 has uh, uh, spiritual powers, ghost ghost power. I don't know. <laughs> All dear laughs. She stands up and moves across the garden path, following the spiral so swiftly and efficiently that she might as well be floating. She drifts over to one of the trees, pulling a coat down from where it's slung over a branch. Oh, there it is. There is the. Oh, uh, I bite. This is the gear where we meta. It covers her from a chain to ankle, coming together to form an olive green symbol on her chest that looks like a question mark. Without a doubt, a bro prime had finished out the assembly. Well, I can teach you astral projection, but pickpocket is actually quite simple. Would you care to learn? Oh, yeah, I, uh, I'm mildly interested. Uh, ideally, we need a third person to act as the mark, but I think we can make it work. More crime! Hmm? <laughs> sure, let's do crime! No more crime, please! <laughs> sure, no crime! <laughs> this world mess started with a thief of a spaceship, and even this bold here is right about all that fake horseshit that was supposed to happen, so maybe I'll uh, into it. Perfect! First and most important aspect of the art of pickpocketing is staying an ab ab obtrusive. You think about mentioning that walking around in a great big coat and floppy hat is not the most unobtrusive thing you've ever seen, but you are an expert here. Also, you're an alien, so you don't really have a room to talk. Maybe you should get a big coat like that yourself. You just love ripping looks off, <laughs> ripping off look. <laughs> looks off all your friends. Paul Deere takes you through the basic of criminals later of hand. Slight of hand. And uh, on the whole, you aren't too bad. In fact, you think you might have future in it if you went already on the career path of a professional friendshipper. You don't know what this has to do with her learning about you or teaching you about places of Antonia, but it's fun, and Baldur is a good teacher. If there is one thing this journey has taught you, is that when something is actively painful or distracting, just write it out. Oh, oops, I... well. You don't think you'll be going around pickpocketing many trolls enough to them already wants to kill you, but it's good to have this skill on reserve if you ever need cash fast and don't have a, like hitting up any of your rich friends. You wonder if a bold dare use it for anything besides passing notes. Oops. My souls tell me that you've been on Altonia for almost three degrees now. I don't know how much she is, but sounds like a long time. 
You have no idea how long I've been reading these, but what the hell, sure. Impressive. No wonder. She trails off thoughtfully and shakes her head. You wish she would say something with some substance to it instead of just vague nonsense. I assume that she was surprised the fact that we survived for so long. But at least she isn't threatening you with violence or trying to stick wires into you. So your continuous interactions are successful so far. Also, you feel really chilled out with Baldir. Sure, you want to be friends, but there's none of that stomach churning, spine bending desperation to make sure she likes you, or whatever the cost. You look more awake than you have in weeks, man. You got to learn how to be pocket in a garden behind a cafe more often if this is what it does to your stress levels. <laughs> Oh man, I mean, who knows? <laughs> uh, to get something to eat. Or maybe just coffee because that's what they serve here. Sure, you could use another caffeinated beverage on top of that another caffeinated beverage you had earlier. Yeah, why not? <laughs> why not? You'll sleep when you're dead. <laughs> that's, that, that's, uh, yeah. <laughs> I guess, yeah. That's something I will, uh, I will definitely say. If only, if only. If only? What do you mean by that, Baldir? <laughs> Baldir, what do you mean by that? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean by that? Is that overshadowing? Baldir? Baldir? <laughs> you follow her out of the garden back into the cafe. Aha, who is this now? Yet another friend. Ah, ah, dad, you're st still here. Of course I am, fool. We are back there for about 10 minutes. Oh, 10 minutes? Oh, you were... felt more longer? Wow, I feel like way longer than that. I guess you underestimate the power of good training montage. <laughs> the montage show oh, is good. <laughs> Introduce Adat to Baldir with a cheerful earnestness of someone who has forgotten to sustain classism of the planet which they currently reside. Adat stop you with an aristocratic sneer. Stop, stop, before I have to stop you myself. I have absolutely no desire to mix with those so low on the social ladder. What in the world could uh, she have you to offer me? You shrug, you are not sure of maybe friendship. <laughs> when all friendship between people of different castes are possible, you see them happen. Regardless, you feel bad for exposing your newest friend to a vaguely nonsensical abuses of your oldest. You turn back to Baudrillard to apologize and find her gazing coldly at Adata as she could do it all night. There is none of the, f none of the fear or rever reverence of false obedience you see at a lower blood display to blues. Instead, Baldir looks at her like she's a bug, worse, a pebble, that she will just love to kick out the way. Psst, nice to meet you in person, Miss Carmia. I hear your GrabTube channel has been losing subscribers recently. I wonder why that is. Blue hits hard that cheeks in an angry flash. <laughs> Boom! Double! <laughs> Emotional damage! <laughs> I, I, I'm curious that one haters. Though garbage was getting tired, have so many limitators that my content is starting to seem derivative. She gives one of her maniac laugh, but is a little less robust than usual. Man, the wild thunder of internet fame really is stark and arid battleground. In fact, I, I have a new feature in the works as we speak. She holds up a little vial, which has been handling with her cash registers over earlier. Poison! <laughs> okay. Because she's she she has that kind of channel. <laughs> I was like, why isn't great? I guess the IKEA building and torturing thing it was too much uh, boring. <laughs> I don't fucking know what the fucking is this in vogue in this fucking universe. God fucking damn it! To give a fucking break, we actually. I wouldn't say we connected much with our, our data. We, we, we did connect much to the, to the first uh, few volumes of characters. It was like, oh, like, oh, she, she just cried <laughs> while well, using psychonesis on us. <laughs> it was like, cool. I mean, uh, what a meaningful uh, acquaintance we had. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I think the best and most expedient process will just be to do with my future guest food and then hide until somewhere in my hide. That looks actually interesting! Unless you have another idea... She smiles, slide me, bold your smile back, but as it's vicious! Great, have fun with that! While bold your thoughts her eyes stop flicking from you, to add that and then down again. Again, you add that and down! <laughs> what? <laughs> oh no! It takes a couple of go-arounds before you realize what she's telling you. She keeps looking down to your hands, which are stuck in your hoodie pocket, exactly where you found the noble to sleep you. 
Ah, that is carrying a bag that looks expensive, extremely god. You can see where the vial of poison is sticking out. Oh man, you know what to <laughs> what you have to do. When a group comes into the shop and pushes past the three of you, you move on your own out and slip a hand into her bag, following into smooth cold vial. She gives you a weird look like why are you suddenly all up on me, dear? But she doesn't notice the theft. I'll suppose I'll be good now. And if I were I you Ryu, I'll be more mindful of what I choose to actually myself with in the future. You say bye to bye. <laughs> you say bye to her, feeling uh, the time is a bit guilty, but she's trying to use this poison to murder the entering her prison basement. She don't feel that bad at all. <laughs> Take care now. Goodbye. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye, Adata. <laughs> Leaves and Bulgy takes an quizzy step closer. Psst, show me. You put your hand is played as spoils, flush with criminal euphoria. Oh, hell no. You grabbed the wrong fucking vial. This one is blue, not red. You grabbed the antidote. <laughs> not the poison. God, you honestly thought you were moving past these kind of cook-ups. Oh, damn. Well, at least you have antidote now. You never know when one of those will come to handy. <laughs> I was like, well, that motherfucker is super dead. <laughs> Whoever asshole guest is going to do not. She's way forward and clutches at her neck. For one confused second, you think she's doing an impression of someone who might need an antidote, and she falls onto her knees. Oh god. You dive forward and catch her before she can totally eat it. She's heavy than she looks, copper muscle, and a coat full of ungoldly number of weapons. She was like four guns on her. <laughs> what the? She has four guns in a fucking jacket? Okay, what the hell? Your arm is a fool, so you can only watch helpless as a troll in a hood that covers their faces in their corn, books it, books it out the door. You shout, you shout, them some fucker just stab your friend, but nobody here is looking at you. Oh, he got stabbed? It's the same way people on Ermai know your mother trying to calm out of their trying a tantrum, just turning their eyes away from the distasteful public scene. Oh, damn it. You put a hand on the boulder's neck to try to staunch the bleeding. There isn't any bleeding. Bewildered, you pull up out the labels on her coat and see a single drop of oily blood trembling above her collarbone. Discoloration spread in a dark spill over her neck and radiating down her chest. You both say it at the same time. Poison. You open your hand to look at the tiny blue vial, then back up to Boilder, her eyes and glassy her skin going blotchy and ashamed. There's no reason to believe that ah, that's poison. And the poison the assassin use are the same with the same antidote. It really strains the powers of coincidence that you grab the antidote at all. You're probably right, but maybe you should try it anyway. I can not feel my legs. Okay, what the hell happened? I'm so quick! So we were trying to slay them and I was okay, there's what a weird situation we are. Right right, maybe the mere fact that this is a such unlikely happen stands means it will be the right antidote. Everything you've done so far has had a pull inevitability uh, to it, especially all of your interesting interaction with Boulder. Great, awesome. When you realize you're inevitably significant to this particular microcosm of causations. Now, can you please put that stuff in my mouth so I can swallow it and possibly not die? You help Boulder tip her head back to put the vial to her lips, and the last minute you wonder if this is supposed to be deliberated. <laughs> the body gulps the whole thing down and immediately begins to shake. Mo billows out her lost and open mouth. Holy shit, what's going on? <laughs> it doesn't seem like any type of attitude to you. But then the smoke clears and Baldi opens uh, her big yellow eyes. How does she feel? Alive. Marginally. She lets you help her to her feet, immediately pull her into a fierce her yet gentle hug. It's why to undergo someone else near death experience, you feel like you know her way better than a one montage scene's worth under your friend. Oh, not so tight. He's up a little to the TC person are staring at you now. That apparently isn't interesting. That apparently isn't interesting, but the possibility of some quite an agent stuff, they're suddenly they are suddenly all about. Sorry assholes, just you and your new friend sharing a touching post near a fatal encounter. Nothing to see here. That's it? Didn't die <laughs> Okay. Victory? I don't know. Fuck he didn't die. <laughs> This is this chapter was weird as fuck. Okay, well, who fucking wanted to kill her? And when did you get stabbed? <laughs> Assuming it was not Adata, because well, well, guess the fucking fuck. Uh, whatever, I guess. Uh, whatever. 